college and he very soon realized the importance of this college so much so that he decided to dedicate his time and efforts and energy and eventually his life to teaching this wonderful uh, way of wisdom especially to the youth he has been uh, instrumental in devising so many wonderful mechanisms for youth teaching uh, things like the, uh, the various uh, books like uh, secret uh, from stress to smile uh, spiritual scientist uh, discover yourself discovery of the self sorry and so many books he has been a recipient of so many global excellence awards for youth outreach uh, roji also very importantly is uh, the president of iskon pune any of you from pune here okay very good we have a very beautiful temple shri radha vrindavan chandra prabhu ji is wonderfully inspiring so many like 6000 odd families there and like 200 uh, bonds for history so very 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 illustrious personality uh, let us very loudly welcome uh, his holiness his grace radhesham prabhu Gopal Khan too with us who's been traveling with Prabhuji so we would like to thank you also for thank you so much so samarkya mile hal bane re radha madhava kunda bihari gopinda
um, um, guiding Zola Samarpasha Maharaj and I got to see some of the very special things. I saw one photo of the four Greyhound buses in which Samarpasha Maharaj used to distribute books in very early days. One of the original pictures I got to see today. So, <clears throat> I had given this topic of converting misfortune into good fortune based on the Srimad Bhagavatam. Many of you might have heard seminars like failures are stepping stone to success. And many people wish to know how, if any calamity falls upon us in our life unexpectedly, Calamity means it doesn't give you any prior information. Suddenly it appears in your life. If something like that comes up, how should one face it? <clears throat> you know, the uh, situations are brought about either by will of providence uh, or in certain situations when we face. One example I tell you is Holiness uh, Shridhar Swami Maharaj. When he was detected with some hepatitis, some disease, doctors told him that your stomach is full of water, huge quantity of water, and they were pumping out, pumping out, again and again water will fill up. So they had told him that you only have one week to live. So immediately he took a flight and went to Sri Ramayapur. And in that one week, guess what he did? In that one week, he was distributing malas, making the visitors chant and told them, I have only seven days, now I have only six days, I have only five days. He was counting down. So he told them that, you know, any time this can come for anybody unexpectedly. At least I got a notice. So you all please take the mala and chant the holy name. Many school children came to my Purdam for darshan and he would preach to them also. So when doctor came to see him, doctor was very morose that this patient is going to leave the body very soon. But Maharaj wanted to enthuse him. He told him, Who is there inside my belly? A baby boy or a baby girl? He was asking. The doctor was shocked that this fellow doesn't appear to be, you know, afraid of death, which is coming very soon. So he was, uh, he, his name only was Jolly Swami. His name was Jolly Swami. He was very jolly while facing death. So, everybody asked him, devotees, Maharaj, how, are you, how is it that you are so comfortable and confident in facing such a great calamity in your life? He said, why should I worry? I have put my feet in the holy dham now. When I was in plane or when I was abroad, I was worrying, will I reach the holy spiritual world of Sri Mayapur? Now that I have come to Mayapur dham, I have no worry now. He said, now I am in the lotus feet of God shelter. So, here is an example of a person who, you know, who is, what can be more worse? Imagine somebody got a wound in the knee. When we were small kids, when we would be running sometimes, we would, we would fall on the ground and get a wound. And we would look around. Is there mother or father, somebody? If nobody is around, we won't cry because there is no use. <laughs> Even if you cry, nobody is going to take notice. If mother is around, and you make a loud sound. Basically, it will draw sympathy. Then she will immediately, you know, she would pick me up and remove the dust and put some medicine. My father will come, seeing me crying, he would tell me, oh, this is the place which uh, hit you. Like that, he would hit that place. <laughs> then you feel very happy. Ah, you bet that fellow very nice. <laughs> so, sometimes you feel, even for a small wound, we may make a big hue and cry. Or somebody may get a leg, leg fracture in an accident, in a car accident or something like that. Yeah. But somebody may marginally escape. See this one? You able to see here? Yes. <laughs> so they were saved, yeah? Isn't it? Marginally were saved. So sometimes 
of course in his faith there is a longer duration of life written huh? so who gives the intelligence to get up he actually sleeps slept in the water while driving the bike is a such a huge truck he would have become chutney under the truck but he therefore there is alpayush madhyayush dirghayush alpayush means below 30 madhyayush means up to 60 and dirghayush means up to 90 or 60 to 90 so different people have different amount of uh, life span fixed but the shastra say especially shrimad bhagavatam says there is no fun in living a very long duration of life if we don't do something substantial something spiritual in life the example is given you know redwood trees some of them live even for 5000 years also but what do you think they do 5000 years means they might have seen krishna coming and giving bhagavad gita to arjuna after that jesus came 20 2000 no, years ago before that buddha 2500 years ago so they have seen krishna coming and giving a knowledge and going and then buddha and then jesus muhammad all these people still the trees are standing like this without any change of heart so such a long duration of life is useless on the other hand shankaracharya lived only 32 years rajendra mahapur lived only 48 years look at the influence they had on the people of the world so which life is better a shorter life with a greater influence spiritual influence is better or a long duration of life like the tree is better yeah yeah somebody says long duration and big influence <laughs> so anyway even if life is short there is no worry so one shouldn't become bogged down by the calamity as soon as you come to know whether it is a wound in the knee or you fractured a leg or even if death befalls upon somebody inevitable death one shouldn't fear when parikshit maharaj came to know that in 7 days he will have to leave the body what do you think he did you see there is a movie in the in the western world one fellow came to know from doctor that he is going to live only one month and he had saved a lot of money and he thought if i die all the money will go to other people let me enjoy this money as much as i can so in that one month you know he went to many movies many parties all star hotels as much as he could eat he ate but after one month now it became two months and he didn't die and he asked the doctor doctor my money is running out you know when i am going doctor said i am also surprised so so in this way that fellow became a beggar he had saved lot of money now he had to go for job again so most of the people in the world may think that if the death, the date of the death is given to them probably they will want to do self gratification but what do you think parikshit did parikshit thought what is the best thing to do in the world he went to the bank of ganges he sat uh, along with many saintly people and showed them some arrived there actually he became completely fearless in one verse he says that tammo payatam pratiyantu vipra गंगा च देवी दृत चित्तमीशेजोपसृष्टस्कुहकस्तक्षकोवाशत्लंगायत विष्णु गाथा इज सेलिंग दैट ऑल ऑफ यू सेंटली पीपल आर सिटिंग अराउंड मी एंड दर इज अ बैंक ऑफ गैंजेस सच अ होली रिवर एंड एम हियरिंग कृष्ण कथा फ्रॉम द माउथ ऑफ शिवदेव समय इज गोइंग टू हियर नाउ सो इज वॉट इज द फियर फॉर मी इवन इफ ए लिव द बॉडी नाउ आई विल गो बैक होम बैक टू बॉडी इट इज ट्रू because when parikshit was leaving the body last day seventh day there was a flower shower by the devatas which indicated to everybody that parikshit is now returning back to spiritual world when shri prabhupada was in calcutta he had five children and he told all the children that now there is a curfew put up in calcutta curfew means nobody should go out and everybody should vacate the houses also nobody should live in calcutta because at that time japanese were throwing bombs so everybody all the children went to mayapur but his wife was refusing to come the prabhu thought what should i do if she wouldn't come as a husband if i leave her and go tomorrow something happens there it would be very unfortunate she was saying that i don't want to leave the home and go i don't bother about the bombs she was saying so prabhu also stayed at home so in order to make sure his wife will be protected and uh, he was making kachoris and he was singing hari krishna later on prabhu told the disciples in america i was telling when i was making kachori i was singing hare krishna i thought to myself 
in case the bomb drops on our house because bomb sound was coming huh? they would hear repeatedly if it drops in our house and our house is set ablaze even if we die i am dying singing alexa so no problem you'll go back to god in case bomb doesn't drop i will offer kachori to krishna he kachori and enjoy either way prabhupada said i have nothing to worry therefore devotee should know this that if you are chanting hari krishna and you are following the regulatory principles you are reading prabhupada books you are surrounded by devotees you are wearing tilak you are wearing kantimala you have nothing to fear therefore krishna says in gita that you should hope for the best and be prepared for the worst so what what is the best thing you can happen if you have an accident in the road just like what happened to that boy i showed you <laughs> is it you escape or little more bad if it can happen you may get a wound in the knee yeah. or you may have a fracture in the leg or even if our body is finished is the soul finished no nahanyate anyamane shri so you know the philosophy the soul can never be cut soul cannot be cut by scissors soul cannot be burned by fire soul cannot be moistened by water soul cannot be dried by air soul is completely spiritual so therefore when you study the scriptures repeatedly this uh, truth will sink in our hearts and uh, gradually it become we will become fearless in all the most situations now the fear some situation is not only death for some people certain things may be as hard as death for example a money loss can be as hard as death for somebody during the 2002 uh, or uh, either it is during y2k y2k time or during the recession time in america there was one student from india ucla he studied and he i heard that he became a very big chartered accountant he became a billionaire huh? uh, raja raman later on and uh, during the recession time when economy came crashing down he came from a billionaire's position to not a beggar huh? but middle class he became middle class so all his friends were calling and said we are we are very sorry to know that you know you have you are a billionaire we were all admiring you you are our role model but now we are very sorry to know that you have come down like this so when he heard a few phone calls it was too much for him to take it all people are you know indirectly you know teasing me he felt like that so he came home and neighbors who observed that you know the door was not open for a week they reported to police police later on found out that this fellow shot his wife and shot his two daughters one son and shot himself also so such a many suicide committed suicide and killed so many people why did he do that because he had no knowledge of bhagavatam ha huh? bhagavatam has so many examples pandavas lost their whole kingdom huh? the earthly kingdom that wife was this you know there was an attempt at disrobing in the public you can see that and bhima was poisoned and they were put in a varanabat lakshagraha palace and they were about to be burned alive and they were saved by vidura's you know guidance later on when they returned from the forest after incognito period they were not given the kingdom back again even though they begged only for five villages even that wasn't given can any of you tell me anybody must have suffered more than pandavas but in these situations the pandavas commit suicide they didn't because they had krishna with them so therefore it's very important for us when we are practicing bhakti yoga one has to take a very firm shelter of the lord in the heart that's called as ishwara pranidhani we call it sharanagati or ishwara pranidhani it's very important like a child feels a sense of belonging many times you must have seen the small children sitting on the lap of their father or mother you've seen right because they feel a very strong sense of belonging to the parents and they won't go anywhere unless parents allow like i have seen one small boy when i had gone south india he was telling his mother mom can i go to play i actually i was talking to the boy's mother and father and some some other family members so there were eight and people sitting and talking to them this boy was disturbing the mother mom please allow me i want to go out. mother said no no when you go out i'll come with you now you don't go after 5 minutes again he was asked, can i go now can i go now again and again he will keep irritating her huh? so i was very surprised why this fellow is repeatedly asking just run away that's all <laughs> because door is open huh? why can't he run away he keeps on asking the mother huh? that goes to show how strongly is connected to the mother you can see that you won't do anything without mother's permission huh? 
Finally, the mother said, Okay, she said, Don't go to the ground floor. Go up, go to your friend's house and play. Okay, then he ran away after that. Mm-hmm. Mother said, Yes, and then he ran. So you can see that means he feels a sense of belonging. If we feel a sense of belonging like this to Krishna, we will never fear because we are in Krishna's lotus feet. Abhaya Saranara. What is that song? Bajagure Mana Srinandanandana Abhaya Saranara Vindade. So in the lotus feet, we feel very safe and uh, sheltered and very secure. Just like when you have locked your house inside, inside the house you feel very secure. But even a secure house is not secure. Because the life is temporary in this world. But Krishna's lotus feet is eternal. So in today's session, uh, I am going to show you a few situations of uh, great devotees who faced the misfortune, but how they converted it into a good fortune. See, first here, the picture shows uh, Duryodhana insulting Vidura. Why did he do that? That is a political plot. Because one time Akrura had come to Hastinapur and he met Dhritarashtra and told him, you cannot, you know, cheat uh, Pandu by not making his sons the king. Pandu is actual king and his first son, uh, Yudhishthir, should become the king. And Yudhishthir is highly qualified. He is a practitioner of strict religious principles. And all the Pandavas are favored by Lord Krishna also, who is the father of all religious principles. And the whole world loves the Pandavas. On the other hand, you are trying to make your son Duryodhana the king. He is an unqualified uh, fool and is a sinful wretch. He doesn't listen to any of the good advice of any of the saintly people. If you make him the king, nobody will be happy with you. Don't be blindly attached to him. This is what Akurura talked to him. So after Akurura went, Dhritarashtra called for a meeting of all the leaders. In that meeting, he declared that today onwards, Yudhishthir Maharaj will be declared as higher apparent. Higher apparent means Yuvaraj. He will be the prince. Which means eventually he will become the king. As soon as he made that announcement, immediately Duryodhana and Shakuni and Karna and Dushasan, four people slipped out from behind. They went to another room for a little conference. So, Duryodhana asked Shakuni, Uncle, what is happening? My father has announced Yudhishthir as the king. Shakuni said, don't worry, everything has a solution. And then he asked, what do you think about uh, Dronacharya? Uh, Duryodhana said, Drona is not a problem because Ashwatthama is a very close friend of mine and Drona is Ashwatthama's father. So he will be up from our side only. Then he asked, what about Kripacharya? Uh, actually, Kripacharya's sister Kripi is married to Dronacharya. Uh, so therefore, uh, there is a relationship in the family. So whatever Drona does, Kripacharya will do also. What about uh, Bhishma Pitama? He said, Bhishma, he will support ruling party and we are the ruling party, so he will support us. There is no worry about him. Then he asked, what about uh, Vidura? He is the only thorn because he lives with us, but he always favors the Pandavas. And he is very learned and wise. And we have no reason to remove him from the palace. So Shakuni said, you have to find out some way to remove him. If he is your enemy. And then Duryodhana asked Shakuni, what about my father? My father only announced this is his name. What about my father? He said, don't worry, your father is attached to you. You tell him that if he doesn't make you the king, you will consume poison and die. So, uh, this is, this was the matter. When uh, uh, Dhritarashtra's weakness was, he was attached to his son. In this way, this is called as politics. What is politics? Politics means you talk about these people are my allies and those people are my enemies and we will form a group and attack that group. This is called politics. Especially those in the spiritual organization like ours, ISKCON. We should never resort to politics. We should keep ourselves simple like innocent children. Chanting, hearing, dancing, taking prasad, absorbed in Lord's name, form, qualities, pastimes. If we keep ourselves, uh, our hearts filled like this, then you will become oblivious to all this politics. You can go beyond that. Otherwise, if you get into dirty politics, 
it's like getting into your gutter like a pig. <laughs> you will get dirty also by that. One time, His Holiness Bhakti Prasad Bhagavat Maharaj came to Pune. Uh, one boy asked, Maharaj, if some devotee is doing politics with me, uh, even we are coming to the temple and we want to meet the uh, community devotees, but if they are doing politics, what I should do? Maharaj asked him a question. Is Mangalarti happening in temple? He asked. Yes, Maharaj, he said. Is Narsing Arti happening? Is Tulasi Arti happening? One Bhavani asked. Are devotees chanting Japa in the morning? Yes, Maharaj, sir. Is there Guru Puja? He said, yes. Is there Srimad Bhagavatam class? Yes, yes Maharaj. Then why didn't you attend all these things? And he also, yes, Maharaj, I can attend. He said, yes, and sit down, he said. <laughs> and he sat down. And the man thought, so many wonderful things are happening, why not take advantage? You know? So, why bother about politics? Because, Makshika Abhrana Michanti, Madhu Michanti, Madhu Pa. The honeybee should always go and sit in a flower to suck honey. And a fly will always go and sit in a piece of stool. Mm. So, we should ignore the politics, even if it is there uh, in uh, any uh, organization. We just focus on what is good and then the good will spread. Just like a blotting paper, you touch it with a ink pen, it will just expand. Huh? Like that, whatever you, your mind focuses on, that is going to expand. If you focus on impurity, impurity will expand. If you focus on purity, purity will expand. Choice is whose choice? Our choice. So, now Duryodhana and Dhritarashtra, they both are very political people, father and son. Therefore, the whole dynasty was vanquished, you will see that. But now Duryodhana made up his mind, I have to give some excuse to throw out Vidra. Like you heard the story once upon a time, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, a fox. Uh, a jackal wanted to eat a lamb, but the lamb was, I mean, the goat was very big. He thought, I can't attack the goat. Goat will kill me with his horns. But the goat's lamb was very attractive. So he was eyeing at the lamb. Whenever the lamb is alone, I will attack him. So one day the lamb was drinking water in the river. And the jackal came there and said, Hey lamb, why are you making my water impure? He asked. Lamb said, sir. You are upstream, I am downstream. How can I make your water impure? Water is coming from you to me, not to me to you. He said, some or other from down to top, you are making it impure and told him and attacked over him, <laughs> jumped over him. <laughs> because he has to give a name and attack the lamb. That is his goal. Similarly, here you see in the picture, uh, Duryodhana, uh, he saw Vidura giving advice to his father, Dhritarashtra. Suddenly one morning, he erupted. Uh, and he reacted very harshly, saying that, look at this man, he eats our salt, but he always favors the Pandavas. And he said, throw this man out only with his life. Yeah. As it is. And Vidura was shocked. He thought, he is my brother's son. He is just like my son. How can he treat me like this? When, when he was speaking like this, look at the palace, everybody is watching. So these words entered Vidura's ears like a sharp arrow that pierced his heart. Actually, that's a saying in English, that spilt milk and broken glass and spared arrow and spoken words cannot be taken back, it is said. So we have to be very careful, just like milk spills on the ground, you can't do anything. Glass breaks, you can't do anything. An arrow is spread from the, once you release it, you can't bring it back. So, in the same manner, Duryodhana spoke very harsh words. Those words are called Karanabhanai. Karanabhanai means like arrows. They pierce the uh, chest of Vidura. He felt great pain for a moment. And immediately one thought came in his mind. This palace is full of politics. And here, you cannot hear about Krishna one moment. Then thinking like this, he thought, let me convert the situation into a positive situation and let me go on a pilgrimage. He thought like that. And next moment you are seeing that he put his bow and arrow down and is walking out. Now you, you, you are seeing that he is wearing, wearing some very costly garments and ornament jewelry. He must be having a palace also. But he gave it all up and when he walked in the street, he wore a very simple dress. And he grew his beard and moustache and long hair. Nobody could even recognize him that he is a minister. Why he did that? Avadhuta Vesham, it is said, purposefully, 
Because if people recognize that it's Vidura, they will ask him, Oh, people did politics with you. Please tell us what happened in the palace. And he will have to talk about it. So he didn't want to talk to anybody about it. He only wanted to hear about Krishna. So he left the palace. And he was, he was going on the way. He met uh, Uddhava. Wonderful conversation you will find in Bhagavatam. Then later on he met Maitreya. And uh, great souls he met. He saw many temple gopurams. He saw the chakra on the top. He offered obeisances. He took holy dip in many rivers and ponds. He would not even wipe the water from his body because when he would come out of the pond and he can walk further uh, before it uh, dries up under the sunlight, he will take another holy dip in another water. And he would meet the uh, pujaris and the temple residents and ask them, please tell me the Sthala Purana, uh, please tell me the pastimes of the Lord which happened in this place. And his heart became flooded with love for Krishna more and more. His eyes were welling up with tears of love for Krishna. In this way, uh, instead of counteracting the dirty politics that happened in the Asat Sabha of Dhritarashtra, uh, he uh, counteracted, it, uh, counteracted it by uh, absorbing himself in Krishna. You can see that. So, in that chapter, Prabhupada writes that in Vidura's heart, internal potency took over. And in Duryodhana's heart, external potency to go. You all know external potency is who? Mahamaya. And internal potency is? Yogamaya, Antaranga Shakti. That means Mitharadharani's grace came upon Vidura. Whereas Duryodhana became more victimized by Durga, Mahamaya potency. So, here is the example of uh, uh, someone who just... Uh, walked out of the palace. Even all of you will have experience sometimes. Some devotee tells you something because of half information uh, and maybe the devotee is uh, in an angry mood. What is the best thing to do when somebody is in an angry mood? You can tell the devotee that right now you are not in a good state of mind it seems. I am sorry. Now we will talk another time when you are a little cool and you can walk out from the place and you can chant Hare Krishna one extra round that day and relax your mind rather than because if two devotees argue with one another, it becomes more and more heated argument. Because sometimes we have half information about something. We don't have full information. It's called misunderstanding, we call it. Huh? So, so due to that, sometimes this person is saying one thing, this is saying another thing, they are like fighting unnecessarily. So all of us, when we lose our temper, we behave in a certain way. When we are cool, then we can speak thoughtfully. So. This is what Vidura did and Vidura became glorious. Later on he took the, he became Narottama. Huh? That's the verse which says that Yosvakat parato veha jata nirveda atmaman kridim kritva harim gehat prabrajetsa Narottama. That verse says that kridim kritva harim geha. Taking Lord Hari in his heart, he left the palace. Which means he made his life successful. He became a, a monk, I mean he became a sannyasi. Again he came back to palace. Do you know that? Do you think he came back to palace so that he can again enjoy the royal delights? Was it the goal? No. He wanted to preach to Dhritarashtra and deliver his brother also. He was not having hatred for Dhritarashtra because he felt pity for Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra was, Dhritarashtra was behaving I mean, in such a bad way. Why? Because of his attachment to Duryodhana. But Duryodhana could strongly preach to him and deliver him also. So in this way, Vidura delivered himself and Vidura delivered Dhritarashtra also, both. Here is another instance of Dhruva being insulted by stepmother, uh, Suruchi. <laughs> you can see her, she is showing hand. Of course, the one who is sitting on the hands of the father is uh, Uttama. And that is Uttanapad. Uttanapad is attached to Suruchi, so he can't tell her anything. He is looking at her, but he can't speak anything. But the Dhruva is standing below. You can see that? You can see the head of Dhruva? Yeah. So Dhruva wants to sit, but she is warning him, you cannot sit, unless you are born from my womb. So Dhruva being a Chatri boy, got insulted. You know, and he loudly cried. You know. His lips were quivering, and body was trembling, eyes were bloodshot. You know. He was breathing heavily. Like sometimes when you uh, trample with your boots upon a snake, <coughs> like that the snake will erupt, isn't it? Like that Dhruva erupted. You know? yeah. 
and then he on the right side you see dhruva going and crying to his mother that mother was a very great mother she told dhruva my dear child uh, i am unable to pacify you you are repeatedly crying but she said do not harbor any malice for anybody in this world if you say somebody has done any harm to you they have to be punished by the supreme god you don't have to worry who is the supreme i mean supreme witness of everyone in this world who is the supreme witness god is a witness parmatma super soul is a witness surely lord will take some action on them you don't have to take just like imagine if somebody like in pune station one fellow uh, the wallet was stolen by a boy big pocket that fellow captured the big pocket took his wallet back and he gave him a slap such a heavy slap he gave the boy fell, fell, fell down unconscious <laughs> immediately all the people surrounded now they became angry with this man they said now we will beat you up now because you slapped him so heavy therefore if you catch a big pocket what you should do you don't slap what do you do you hand him over to police they will do the need for you take your wallet and you push up you hand over to authority same way his mother told her, if you think your stepmother has uh, dealt with you very harshly then she will be punished by the supreme authority god you don't have to punish her you pacify yourself and also even in your mind do not harbor any malice such a wonderful teaching it is in all of our lives some people will praise us some people will insult us and which uh, deeply penetrates our heart the insult Uh, and if somebody is insulted we, we are just thinking when another occasion comes i will not leave that fellow and we keep on maintaining a revengeful attitude and that revengeful attitude burns our heart it is more harmful to our health than hurting the other person also so therefore the first lesson mother taught him that secondly she told him in life it is better for you to think about your progress rather than pulling others leg down many people nowadays you find people right up pull others leg she said that out of the two taking revenge on stepmother is important or making progress in your life is important which is important you make progress she said very intelligent advice focus on that that is positive pulling somebody's leg down is negative so dhruva accepted how do that ask his mother she said if you see lord vishnu you can get the love of a million mothers she told him so dhruva became interested to go to the forest as mother taught him told him that if you go to forest you will meet saintly people so dhruva is meeting narada in the forest and he was greatly inspired by narada's character his his conduct his behavior his devotion he took narada's instructions very seriously and narada taught him how to do meditation so he did meditation and attained darshan of lord vishnu huh? in 6 months only after performing lot of austerities so uh, although he did not want any dhruva loka but lord still gave him dhruva loka huh? you can see the dhruva tara huh? behind see so attained success and returned back huh? successfully huh? so you can see the example of dhruva such a thing can happen to all of us somebody is insulting that consumes our mind huh? that really uh, you know increases our worry more and more some people become depressed some become hopeless some people develop inferiority complex huh? and some people get diseases they some people even get mental diseases so on the other hand dhruva you know materially he became successful because he got dhruva loka spiritually he became successful because he got darshan of lord vishnu he attained the shelter of narada muni as his guru just see how fortunate and blessed he became he didn't become stuck up in his misfortune that's the most important lesson we should learn when you face some inevitability in your life what will you do i was with a group of youth in america i was telling them one example in south india one girl got 93% in 12th standard and then she wanted to crack the neat exam for joining medical so that she failed so all her friends were calling you know what happened to you, what happened to you and everything so she was very much disturbed in mind so unfortunately she consumed some rat poison and died so i was telling this instance and i asked the youths here 
If you failed in the NEET exam, what would be your response? Your friends are all calling. So one boy said, I will change my mobile number. <laughs> <laughs> so they can't call me in that, he said. And another girl said that, I will lock me up in my room and I will give my mobile to my mom. And I will lock myself in the room. So no friends can meet me and no friends can call me also. Then I asked, what will you do inside the room? You'll be crying. That means that's not the solution. And one boy said, I will reappear in the exam, meet exam next year. And I will study well now, he said. Then I told them, see, you have to worry what your parents are thinking about you and what God is thinking about you. Your parents have accepted you despite your failure in NEET exam. And God anyway accepts everybody. We are all his children only. Why to bother about the rest of the world? Just that the people in the world will talk big, big things. They are not going to do anything for you. Your parents are taking care of you. Why do you bother? And they all said, wow, this we never thought. They said, this is a very wonderful point. They said like that. So, uh, because there's a story of father, son and a donkey, you must have heard. You know, this father purchased a donkey from the market. He put his son on the donkey and they were walking. He was walking. Then some people commented, hey, old man is walking, young boy is sitting. What kind of uh, yuga is this? Is it Kali Yuga? They were saying. Then father thought, uh, son immediately got down and said, Papa, you sit. I think people want older people to sit. So you sit. So he sat. Some people said, see the old man, he is enjoying a good ride and he is making his poor son walk, he said. Then father took the son also, both of them sat and they were going. And some people said, how cruel are these people? Both are sitting on the donkey and how much the poor creature will suffer. Then immediately both of them got down, they felt guilty. Then they lifted the donkey over their head, <laughs> two, two legs. Some people laughed at them and said, hey, look at this guy. He purchased a donkey from the market, but he's not using it. They are lifting it. Ha, ha, ha. They were laughing. So these people became so confused. When a bridge came, they threw it in the river. <laughs> yeah? So I told this story and told them, don't bother too much about what the people in the world tell you. You don't have to be validated by the world. As long as you are, valid, you are uh, under the shelter of your parents, and Guru and Krishna, no? you need to develop the confidence. Unfortunately, nowadays people send so many things in Facebook and they want uh, likes. Uh, and many people put this. Uh, and people get so morose. Uh, people become feverish. Why I put a picture, nobody is responding to me. Uh, my friend got so many likes, I am not getting likes. This kind of comparisons have uh, you know, eaten up the hearts of so many. Uh, foolishness. So Dhruva was not like that. Dhruva. Dhruva for one of the things that I, I greatly admire in Dhruva is, Dhruva was always submissive. When his mother told him, give up marriage, you know, and look towards your progress, he accepted. Mother told him, go to forests and meet saintly people, he did that. And Narada taught him the confidence of surrender, he accepted and followed that. Later on, when Swami Bhavan told him not to fight with Yakshas, he desisted from fighting with Yakshas. Later on, uh, Kubera also told him, and to stop the war and he stopped. So whatever <coughs> the elders told him, he faithfully followed and therefore he emerged successful, materially, spiritually, in both respects. In this way, you know, weeping Dhruva became a glorious Dhruva. Here is another example of uh, one King Vena. <coughs> Actually, the, his father Anga, we need to know a little bit about him, his father. His father Anga was a very good soul. Huh? He one day was performing a sacrifice to get a son. And the Brahmanas were all chanting the Vedic mantras and the sacrifice was going on. And all the devatas would appear in the sky, but they won't come down. They were just standing like this and watching the sacrifice. And they were not coming and accepting the offerings. So he asked the, he, he requested Brahmanas permission for breaking the vow of silence. And he asked them. Why is it that the devatas are not coming down and accepting the Vishnu Prasad I am offering them? And the, they saw his horoscope and everything and said, We are very sorry to tell you, King, in this life you are so pure hearted. I think you have to put that. Yeah. Here back, sir. You know, he said, 
you are so pure hearted you you are here even in your mind you have not committed sin they said what is speak of committing with your hands and legs you have not committed any sin in this life but your previous life account is very bad you have committed some sinful activities in the past due to which now you have no putra bhagya <clears throat> no you have no son in this lifetime they said but then the brahmana said <clears throat> Devatas cannot award you a son, therefore they are not accepting your offering. Because if they accept the offering and not award a son, they will become uh, obliged to you. <clears throat> therefore they are not accepting. But <clears throat> we can do another thing, alternative, he said. <clears throat> if you, if we can perform a yajna to Lord Vishnu, then Vishnu can give you a son. Now all of me wonder, how can Vishnu give? Devatas cannot give, how Vishnu can give? So Vishnu is very intelligent. He will give him a son in such a way that whatever suffering will come to Anga by not having son, that much suffering the son will give him. You understand? No? Because the quantum of pain and quantum of pleasure is written on our forehead by Brahma Lipi, we call it, at the time of our birth. So Lord Vishnu can do that. He can give a son and give the same amount of trouble. By, because whatever hankering he felt for having a son, that, that much uh, amount of negative account, that much he will suffer by the son. So, Anga accepted, <coughs> Anga uh, was uh, ready for it. So, now they performed the sacrifice and then he got a son. And what was the name of the name of his son? Vena. This Vena was a very dangerous son. Uh, this Vena, even as a small child, a small boy, he would pick up the other small boys and throw them in the ocean. And many, many people came and complained to Anga. They know that Anga was a good king. The problem was, Anga's wife, her name was Sunitha. And she was daughter of Mrityu. See, generally the daughter gets the quality of her father. And son gets the quality of the mother. Shastra say that. Bhagavatam you find that. So, <clears throat> therefore, the son born to uh, Anga and uh, Sunita. Who, who was it? Vena. Very dangerous boy. He tried to reform his boy repeatedly. He pleaded him, begged him, he threatened him, all kinds of things. He tried. Nothing worked. He couldn't be changed at all. He was so fed up. At that time, Anga made a point. He said that in this world, some people don't have a son. They, they feel very sorry that we don't have a son. But if somebody gets a good son, they are very happy. Imagine one of one of the sons of somebody, they became, when he became a Vidwan, he became a, you know, very great devotee of the Lord. At least one, if one is not a devotee, one should be pious. At least, yeah, now it's coming now. So in this way, one should be, one should get a, Chanakya says that, a son should be a Vidwan, or should be a Bhakti man. Then the parents' fame will increase in this world. In this world, you will see if some kid is doing mischievous activity, immediately people will ask a question. What they will ask? Whose child is this? Similarly, if a boy or a little girl is very intelligent in devotional service, chanting many shlokas, immediately people ask what question? Whose child is this? That means that you behave good or behave bad. In both cases, it is attributed ultimately to parents. You will see that. So, that is the Vena. He became very, very atrocious. Later on, Angamaraj decided to leave the uh, society and go to forest. And then he, he practiced pure devotion service and went back to Godhead. Of course, Anga became very atrocious more and more. Later on, Brahmanas were dissatisfied. <laughs> then they said, Ananga died by the Hunkar. He was finished. I mean, the Vena, Vena died. So, here, some of you can consider this question written below. Do you prefer a good son or a bad son? Everybody will say, what son? Good, good son, they will say. But sometimes, imagine having a very good son, very obedient son, you know, who exactly does things according to the expectation. What is likely to happen? Like parents are saying, the son brings the first rank, is good in studies, is good in stock recitation. You know, he eventually goes on to become a great uh, Bhaktiman preacher. Everything is wonderful. 
Uh, parents are watching, watching. Some children are so good. Uh, what is likely to happen? The parents can become attached. And uh, they may, they, uh, that attachment, of course, attachment and affection in this world uh, is uh, not bad as long as we are strongly sheltered in Krishna's daughter's feet. Then we can purify our attachments. Otherwise, sometimes one can become attached, as Dhiradrasha became attached to Duryodhana. Uh, one can become attached like that. Uh, and one may, yeah, some people, like one uh, man who was 70 years old, he, he called his son, Beta, come here. See, she, here is my daughter in law. I asked her for a filter coffee, but she is shouting. She says, you know, Why should I give you separate coffee? Whatever I am making for others, you drink, she says. When you are drinking polvita and you know, your mother is drinking tea, and I want coffee, she doesn't want to make different items for different people. Because she has raised her tone to me today, I have decided to leave home. He said. And he left in the morning and went. Everybody thought now he is now he's going to be renounced now. The evening he came back. <laughs> Till then, where was he? He was in Anandani Park. <laughs> evening he came back. And the daughter in law was wondering, oh, he has come back. And he told his son, Actually, I am very angry with my daughter-in-law, but still I have come for my grandson because he needs me for taking for a walk. He said. So, you will see that in this world, attachment is very strong, <laughs> very difficult to give up. So, therefore, what Anga said, uh, actually God gave me a bad son and it's not a bad idea because this son helped me to develop detachment. He was such a bad son that I developed detachment and I ran to, towards Krishna, like the case said. So he converted his misfortune into good fortune like this. The end result for Anga was glorious. Although his previous uh, sinful account was there and that brought a bad son, but the end result came very uh, auspicious for him, which is to go back home back to. Uh, here is a pastime from Srimad Bhagavatam Nankato, you will read it. There was on Prince Prashadra. Uh, this Prashadra, although he was a king's son, he was a very, very extraordinary uh, man of character. You know, this boy, right from young age, was very fond of cows. He would protect the cows. He would go and live in a cow barn. So, as he grew up, he told the father that, let my brothers become the king. And I want to be a cow protector. I want to take care of the cows. Because some people have great, they are lovers of cows. He was like that. So, he would stand outside the cows born in the night with a sword in hand to ensure that no, no, there would be no danger for the cows. Like a tiger or lion shouldn't come and attack. So he would be protecting, he was protecting one day like that. One day a tiger entered the Goshal at night. You know. It was a dark night. There was a, it was also moonlit night but the moon was that bright. You know. There was a dim moonlight. And when the tiger entered to capture a cow and take it with uh, with it. It happens sometimes. Uh, sometimes when the villagers are little inattentive, the tigers or the cheetah, um, they will enter into the cow barn. The tiger is a very majestic animal. It can even lift a whole bull with his mouth and drag it and take it. Uh, so, uh, when the cows started running hither and thither. They came out of the barn and started running hither and thither out of fear. Because they thought that now that it has entered into only one cow it will catch. Yeah. Who will be that cow? Every cow is naturally afraid. And they were running like this. President saw that yeah. this forest creature has come here. And then he took his sword and he threw it over the tiger. But at that time, the tiger's leg got little wounded. And the tiger ran into the forest immediately. But then when the uh, sun rose in the morning, uh, you see, when he, throw, when he threw the sword, the tiger's leg got little hurt, it ran away. It didn't kill any cow. But then later on, the brahmanas found that a cow mistakenly got killed by the sword. When he threw the sword, uh, so they found the uh, cow hurt in the neck and the cow had died. So, immediately um, the, the news reached the ears of Vasishta. Vasishta also saw it in Jnana Jakshu that the cow is killed. Saw that. 
So immediately he, he actually one mistake that happened with Vasishta was Vasishta thought that uh, Prashantra killed the cow. Will he ever kill the cow? He is a lover of the cow. How will he kill? So Vasishta said, "You fool! You are you are a protector of the cow. Now you have killed the cow. I curse you." That in your next life you become a Shudra, like that he said. Now, imagine if a superior is behaving like that with you. Naturally, you know that it is a misunderstanding. He didn't get the complete picture. He only got a partial picture. Most of us would immediately rebel against what he said, protest against what the superior said, and we would try to explain to him, isn't it? But what Prashatra thought in his mind was, you know, it has come from the mouth of Asishta, he's a great soul. And I don't want to give any clarification. But I am going to become a Shudra in the next life, which means I will fall from my position I'm from a Kshatriya to a lesser than the fourth class. So I should do something by which I can rectify uh, the situation. So what can I do? He deeply thought about it. Avasta does Prashadra to become Shudra next life. So Prasadra uh, went to a Gurukula and joined as a Brahmachari in the Ashrama there. And he told the Guru that, please teach me the path of Bhakti Yoga, Shuddha Bhakti. Because in this world, even one has committed whatever kind of sins, you know, Aham Tvam Sarva Pabhyo Unknowingly, I mean, I threw the sword, a cow got killed. And uh, added to that, I have become misunderstood by great soul Vasishtha. Let all this aparada and all this sins be eradicated. I am ready to give my body, mind and soul to Krishna's service. Like that he went and met the Guru and Guru accepted and he practiced the sincere devotion service. So guess what happened to him? Uh, he went back to Godhead. He didn't become Shudra. How Vasishta's curse became false? Because in, in this world, materially, your destiny cannot be changed. But spiritually, you can change. There are three levels of destiny. Adrida, Drida, Adrida, Adrida, we call it. Adrida means mild destiny, uh, which indicates based on your swabhava, your nature. You can change it very easily. And Drida, Drida means there are certain uh, strong natures. We call it as a uh, propensity, tendency, and sanskar. Three things we call it. Propensity means, for example, you have a propensity to eat sweet more, for example. So today they have made gulab jamun, everybody is given two, you will also eat two. But you will be desiring that if somebody comes and gives me two more, I will be happy. And you will happily eat it, that you have propensity. But tendency means you will go into the kitchen and search, is there anything left? So you will go out of the way. And sanskar means you will fight for it and get more. At any cost. Even, even if you have to cut a sari figure, still you will be ashamed. Without shame, you go and demand it. So it becomes deeper and deeper. Similarly, the uh, destiny means, for example, a red signal, when it falls, then you stop your car, isn't it? Similarly, destiny is somewhat like a signal. If you are conscious and you take shelter of Krishna, you can even surpass destiny also. But if you are not conscious, when a red signal falls, unconsciously you drive your car, then you get a, I mean, a penalty. You have to pay a system. So most people in the world are unconscious, they act instinctively, therefore they have to suffer the destiny. But devotees of the Lord who are very conscious and alert, they become careful, they can surpass the destiny also by Krishna's grace. Machitta sarva durgani mat prasadan tarishyasi atat chetpa mahankaram nashvashyasi vinakshyasi Krishna says, by my mercy, my dear devotee can cross over this ocean of samsara. Krishna says that very easily. So he went back to Godhead. Last example I'm going to say. Here is still Prabhupada in the West, how he struggled with. Eight defeats I'm going to show you. This is the last one. And Prabhupada came to America. You know, first one year nothing much happened there. He struggled and struggled. Then at the end of first year, Prabhupada was thinking that unless I have my own temple in America, I can't bring people and cultivate them nicely. He wanted to build a temple in America. So in New York, he, he was searching for a place where he could build a temple. So one hot pan, you know. So here you are finding in the first defeat, Prabhupada wanted Lal Bhadra Shastri, uh, whom, see he is giving the copy of his Bhagavatam to him. Uh, and Lal Bhadra Shastri happily accepted and he congratulated Prabhupada also in India. Uh, 
But later, Srila Prabhupada uh, thought that I want the currency from India to come into America for me to build a temple here. That for that I need Lakhbhadu Shastri's uh, sanction. So when he comes to, he was actually supposed to go to Russia and come to America. But unfortunately on the way only he passed away. <laughs> this was the first debate. So after that Indira Gandhi became the Prime Minister after that. Secondly, there was a two-story building by one hot man. He was ready to sell the property, 7 lakh rupees worth. Prabhupada wanted money. So Prabhupada told him that, no, please do not sell it to anybody. I will purchase it. I will somehow get donation from India. So there was a Padambad Singhania in India, very rich man. He, Prabhupada knew him before and then he wrote a letter to him. And Padambad Singhania said, Swamiji, I also want to build a temple in America. He said. Prabhupada said, wonderful. I want to make it and you also want to make it. And I have already seen a building. Let us purchase this building and we can engage in preaching. Similar building like, you know, it's this kind of hall kind of thing. It's a two-story building. Padamba Singhani was surprised. You want to buy a old building. That's not what I want. I want to make a small temple, but very sculpturally, you know, very architecturally astute, very nice. Eh? It should be architecturally, very, very fine carvings. He wanted a small temple. You have seen such temples of the right in India. So Prabhupada said, what do we do with such a temple? How can people sit in satsanga? Huh? Uh, if you want 300, 500 people to sit, how can they sit in a small temple? But Padambatangana insisted, I am ready to spend 50 lakhs, he said, for such a meticulously built temple. How can you buy a old uh, I mean, uh, building? Prabhupada said, okay, for your pleasure, we will make a gopuram on the top, huh? over the two story. We are like Vrindavan Balas and you are like Dwaraka Wala. You have money. And I have the spirit. So for your pleasure, we may go for him. And for my request, you can allow me to take this two-story building of Hartman and we can preach nicely. So you will also get the credit of preaching, Prabhupada said. That for the person was not interested. Still, Prabhupada didn't close his book. He thought he will give money later. In the meantime, he went to Hartman and said, Sir, please, uh, Prabhupada was very, very intelligent. He said to Hartman, we will make you one of the directors, board of directors of ISKCON society, he told him. And, and we will use your building uh, and you don't have to pay tax. We will, we will pay tax for you, whatever tax you are supposed to pay, as long as we stay here. But Hartman's heart was not melting. You know, he said nothing to it. He told them to vacate. That was the second defeat for Prabhupada. And then Padam Singhani had a very large JK administration. He wanted to build a temple, but he didn't give a single penny to Prabhupada at that time. He was not uh, willing to give 7 lakh rupees. He had 50 lakh rupees to build some other type of temple. And Prabhupada told Tirtha Maharaj in India, please go to Indira Gandhi and get me permission for bringing that uh, money to, uh, I can get some donation from India from the Velvishas for me to build a temple in New York. And there was no response uh, from him. But later on, response came that Indira Gandhi was not ready. She told that, no, 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 you locally collected, you do it. I can't give shit. permission, she said. That was also defeat. And the Prabhupada had given his books to one universal book depot in Bombay. Now he called them and said, hey, my money in America is running out. How many of my books are sold? Instead of Mumbai, I will make you in charge of Pune also. And all over Maharashtra, you can be the dealer. Sell as many books as possible quickly, Prabhupada said. So those, they wrote back to him saying that, Swamiji, you are very sorry to say, nowadays youths are not interested in God. You know, they were buy only other books. So we were taking a dealership of your books, but now we want to give it back. We don't want your books, like that they said. So books were not sold and money was not coming from India and his money was running out in America. That was another debate. Indira Gandhi also gave an unfavorable response, yeah. Then uh, Prabhupada wrote to uh, Samadhi Morarji. He told her, you only gave me a ticket in a cargo ship. Now, he said, I have two requests for you. He said, one is, I am building a temple in New York for your Balagopal, Prabhupada wrote, because she was very fond of Balagopal. I am making a temple for Balagopal in New York, so I want you to take lead in doing that. 
and also i want many mridangams to be sent from india here i am i want my disabled to get taxes and later on i also want your help uh, uh, by which my disabled uh, can come from america to india and india to america there should be some this thing you help in these things and there was not a single reply from her it was like a stone put in a well uh, no response at all and the defeat um, finally one mukti brahmachari wrote to propal one day uh, he said swami ji i am very eager to come to america to assist you can you take me Baba said, "Oh, at last I am going to get some help." He thought. He told him that definitely I will be most happy. I am also looking for helping hand. But you are a disciple of my god brother, who is also a disciple of Pakistan Tarjit Bagal. So you should ask your Guru Maharaj with his blessing. You should come. So Munshi Prabhu Chari asked Baba, "Can I first come to America and then make a phone call to him?" He said, "No, that's not good." you should first take his blessing and come don't worry your guru will give permission because he is my god brother we both are disciples of same guru pakshan sir talk i said papa sir so mukti pramachari went to his guru and told him the guru said this swami maharaj at the time papa's name was swami maharaj he used to call abai abai they used to call him abai babu later on swami maharaj they would call him this swami maharaj is wasting his time in america you know nobody is going to take him seriously you will waste some more years and then you'll come back to vrindavan you don't go and waste your time with him like that is guru told him and then mukti brahmachari called to him and said swami ji my guru maharaj says that you are attempt to preach in america he is a ludicrous attempt like that he wrote so probably the plain impact saying that uh, i i am in the zip of your letter uh, you say that my attempt to preach in america is a ludicrous attempt is useless attempt Hmm. it will be a failure but let me tell you even lord nitananda prabhu tried to deliver jaga and madai and the first go they could he could not deliver them because they came running after them and after him correct hmm. and they chased him away second time he went they hit him with a pot hmm. but at last nitananda prabhu could deliver jaga and madai both and gave them the love of god and we are all followers of nitananda prabhu our attempt to preach krishna consciousness will never be considered a failure even if we don't preach lord will be pleased with us lord gauranga lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and nitananda prabhu they will bless us they will please us we are like children we should do our part if lord is pleased with us he may make us successful or even if we fail in our preaching at least lord will be happy that we have made an attempt so this attempt can never be a ridiculous attempt in fact your letter which you have sent me that is ridiculous letter as the prophet told me so is one satchudas maharaj writes in leela mrita defeat after defeat after defeat after defeat so many failures to be faced and krishna was watching from the top and he did not offer any help to prophet why why all these defeats came he gives a reasoning for that he says that krishna wanted to strip away all these people from prabhu par so that he can give the 100% credit to only prabhupada for spreading krishna consciousness all over the world yeah he prabhupada going to smriti murari and then going in the jaladuta at last and then you know facing a couple of heart attacks and then lord coming and giving assurance to all the avatars so krishna personally came and told him don't worry be assured i am there with you Uh, you are going to do great preaching in America. Krishna gave him assurance, and the Papa arrived in USA, and he spread it among the hippies, and uh, single-handedly he started this movement, even in the old age, seventy plus. And in this way, eventually, you saw he became grand and successful. Thousands of temples are open now, more than a thousand temples worldwide now. Lakhs of initiated devotees, thousands of Hari Nams are going on. Uh, everywhere you can see mayapur the temple hall can accommodate practically 20000 devotees 20 25000 devotees can be accommodated in the mayapur temple hall so only now 60 crore spiritual literature are distributed now and football life is going on all over the world here kalchan ji temple the devotees our prasad prabhu you know we have been giving such amazing prasad that i heard that the uh, utd uh, has uh, given permission for his son to open a unit inside the university hmm? 
That's a very great success because in uh, they do it in games where in one of the Krishna land, Krishna kitchen they do that. But other than that, in America there was no permission anywhere else. But here now they got permission to do this service. So his khan has become very famous for prasad also. So in this way, Prabhupada became very successful. See, he had the most successful India Indian in America. So this is a recent 2020. There was a news article about Prabhupada. So after facing so many defeats, at last, you know, you can see Prabhupada how he, he did great miracles. So he converted all this misfortune into ultimately good fortune, not only for himself but for the whole world. Shri Prabhupada ki. Hare Krishna. So once again, thank you very much to all of you for very kindly and attentively listening. Let us express our gratitude to His Grace Radisha who got such a wonderful lecture by loudly chanting three lines. Alright. A few more uh, vote of thanks. Um, uh, we would like to thank the temple management of Sri Raghunath Temple, uh, the trustees, especially Sri Hari Patroji, is he here? I don't know if he's here, but we would like to thank him for opening this facility for us to come and have this wonderful satsang program. We would also like to thank actually our management and coordination team which has been working so hard for the last few days to get these programs together, back-to-back programs. Daujini uh, Kai Prabhu, Mataji, Kauri Kumari Mataji, Tirupati Prabhu and his wife Harika Mataji, Prajendra Sutra Prabhu and his wife Premar Radhika Mataji, Balram Hari Prabhu and Dithi Bhai Mataji. They have been working so hard to get these programs together. So let us also thank them by loudly saying, Hari Bol! Hari Bol! Hari Bol! Today also happens to be the birthday of Kauri Sutra Yes, for him later. <laughs> and uh, so now, yeah. so uh, the next schedule of events is that we do have an opportunity to meet Proji. Uh, we just request you all, whoever wants, you can come slowly, but be up to here uh, since we want to keep some protocols. If you have a mask, that would be really nice. You can put it up. Otherwise, do you have masks to this one? Yeah, we have. So you can wear the mask as you come to talk to Guruji. And we also have prasadam. That is 